Trying to have a new curve. He spot Adams to away at stop and go meet him to 53 with a heavy ramp to southbound 53. Well, southbound 53 traffic moves well. It's 10 minutes from Lake Cook to 290. Inbound Stevenson, the ramp to the northbound tri state remains blocked with a north turn semi. Stevenson trip time is 35 minutes from the Veterans Memorial Tollway to DeSabo Lakeshore Drive. Kennedy, 29 minutes, O'Hare to downtown. The Eisenhower is 40 minutes from 390. The ride from 95th Street to downtown Chicago, it's 29 minutes. That's traffic. I'm Jim Talamonte on AM 560, The Answer. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next. AM 560 Weather Center forecast. For today, sun and clouds, high 85. Currently 71, next news at 9. Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan and Amy continues next. On AM 560, The Answer. From the Matrix Home Solutions studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer. On AM 560, The Answer. Listen to AM560 The Answer online at 560theanswer.com on the AM560 mobile app, on your Alexa-powered smart speaker, and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM560 The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan, and in for Amy this morning, uh, former Chicago Tribune editorial page editor Kristen McQuarrie and Kristen Two of the worst people in the world who are not dictators or war criminals are that uh, Meghan Markle and that Prince Harry. Two, I mean, there's two of the worst people in the world. I'm reserving judgment. Awful people. Uh, and um, the intersection of Meghan Markle and uh, the critical race theory hustle that has taken hold in so many quarters in America, education, not just education, all institutions, but also culturally, as we know, corporate America. Remember, remember Ibram Kendi, How to Be an Anti-Racist, which is to say how to be a racist. Ten million bucks from Jack Dorsey to back his Boston University Center for Anti-Racist Studies. This guy's a celebutant masquerading as an intellectual and being underwritten by business people, and other celebrities masquerading as intellectuals. Uh, don't think so? Ibram Kendi's uh, Instagram account. To celebrate the 40th birthday of my friend Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, I'm donating 40 minutes of mentorship time to a woman re-entering the workforce. Will you join me? That's what she asked for for her birthday. Did mm-hmm. you see the, the ad? No. On Well, Melissa McCarthy, whom I love, from that that's the actress right from bridesmaids and yeah the, the comedian the fat one well she's not anymore she's uh, lost a ton of weight right. um but she does this it is funny this uh kickoff for megan's birthday where she asks 40 friends to spend 40 minutes trying to help a woman um re-engage in the workforce <sighs> yeah uh, again I, I know i understand the performative identitarian pablo i'm just bringing it's with no, the I know. gram. it's on the gram uh, it's on the gram it's on the gram no i know to bring and, you up to speed and, with what the kids are saying and this is where the the leading light of uh racial studies of combating racism in america finds himself i mean that's how he's described by the political entertainment press corps and, and who can distinguish between the two. Ibram Kendi, Meghan Markle, Melissa McCarthy. They, they Chris can, Cuomo. They can go Chris to lunch Cuomo. on Jack Dorsey's 10 million bucks. Sure. It's remarkable. But I just, they need to continue to expose these people for the dilettantes that they are. Unserious people, serious hustlers. And so it's uh, necessitated that, along with Nicole Hannah-Jones, now at Howard University, doing what, at Howard, what Ibram Kendi is doing at Boston U, uh, the uh, Pulitzer Prize winning <clears throat> uh, author of the 1619 Project, New York Times back. Um, because of them, we necess- it, 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 there's been a response. I mean, it, it's appropriate. It's necessary. Of 1776, the 1776 Unites, Bob Woodson's group that we've we've spoken to Bob many times and other scholars that are part of his group, uh, as well as curriculum being advanced uh, both in sort of op-ed form, places like Real Clear Politics, as well as at uh, one of the few universities that actually still believes that a university is supposed to be 
a uh, free marketplace of ideas, both to be intellectually rigorous. There's no such thing as safe spaces from substantive discussion. That would be Hillsdale College up there in Hillsdale, Michigan. And uh, they also have a 1776 curriculum, which I believe we used to call just history. <laughs> uh, to discuss that, we're pleased to be joined by Kathleen O'Toole, Assistant Provost for K-12 Education at Hillsdale College. Kathleen, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. So the uh, K-12 1776 curriculum that Hillsdale has promulgated, uh, give us details. Sure. Well, it's a content-rich curriculum. Uh, it tells the whole story of America, the tragedies and the triumphs. Uh, it's full of primary sources. It's full of tips for teachers, key terms, maps, dates, names. And uh, so far, we've done the founding and the Civil War, the two things which we as a country are especially confused about right now. And it's 2,400 pages long, and it's absolutely free on k12.hillsdale.edu. Well, there you go. So this is for maybe people that are uh, trying to do some homeschooling or pod schooling or just trying to deprogram their kid from the government school they sent them to. Yeah, and for teachers. Listen, teachers are looking for quality resources that they can that they can believe in, that they can count on. And uh, rather than, you know, have a particular or political view about questions of questions related to the founding and the civil war in our country, we just give people the tools to investigate those questions themselves. Is so it, this is a this is a great thing for parents and teachers alike. Is it based on the 1776 Unites um, platform? Because, Dan, wasn't there a time when there was going to be curriculum? There, there is. There 1776 is. Unites has also put out uh, scholarship. Ian Rowe, who ran charter schools in the Bronx, uh, it was sort of the uh, the impetus behind that. That was sort of his, his deal as a former educator and administrator. Um, but, yeah, so there's, you know, there's um, a lot that's being put into the arena because of the flimflammery from uh, 1619 and— and uh, intellectual frauds like Ibram Kendi. Is that, that's correct, right, Kathleen? Yeah, that's right. Uh, this, this curriculum wasn't created in response to anything. Uh, this is just what we do at Hillsdale College and have been doing for over 175 years. We, uh, we advise and provide curriculum to charter schools. There are dozens of them across the country. And this is, this is the curriculum in those schools and in the history and government departments here at the college. Uh, we just thought it was time to make it available to everyone because the debate is raging and there are a lot of people who are confused about how to go about figuring out what's really true. Well, one of my former colleagues, um, Clarence Page, longtime columnist for the Chicago Tribune and editorial board member, has written about this as well. Um, he is a widely known liberal uh, but supports what Woodson has been doing. And in a recent column, I'm just going to kind of paraphrase here what what Clarence Page understands is needed. Um, the untold and underappreciated stories of resilience and success that African Americans have achieved despite the obstacles and degradation of slavery and Jim Crow. And he goes on to say that um, in schools, we need to do more to write about how this is Clarence Page again. Patri patriotism is not for whites only, even though some of my brethren and sisters too often think it is for all the moral shortcomings of our nation's slavery tolerating, tolerating founders like Thomas Jefferson, they also provided the rhetorical and constitutional tools that leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. and Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall used effectively to fight for our liberation. So it's just good to see um, this. This was in a column, I think, just a couple days ago. But there is a, there is a pushback, and obviously you are um, trying to get that out front to what is sort of this pivot that we're seeing um, as, it re as it relates to history taught in schools? Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, there are a lot of people right now talking about how history should be taught in K-12 schools who have already made up their mind about the nature of American history. There are big questions surrounding the founding. You know, how was it that Thomas Jefferson wrote all men are created equal and then also owned slaves? That's a puzzle. Uh, same thing with the Civil War. You know, how was it that our nation, slavery persisted in our nation for so long? And those are difficult questions. Those are questions of justice. 
and our view is the way that you the way that you begin to answer those questions is by really studying history in its fullness not making up your mind in advance and then giving students a narrative a politicized narrative that brings them over to your point of view uh, you know, just generally speaking, what's happening in higher education has been happening for a long time. It's perhaps um, increased in pace, and it was moving pretty quickly, uh, but increased in pace during the pandemic. Uh, James Hankins, who's a professor of history at Harvard University, perhaps the last professor of history at Harvard that will ever make sense again, uh, he writes uh, recently, the more credentialed people are, the more they cling to their membership in the tribe of the soi disant educated. Do you like my French pronunciation there? Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Educated people don't trust their own intelligence. They trust what they've been taught by authorities of approved by educators. This is because their knowledge of what the right authorities say defines who they are and gives them status in the community. As uh, Chesterton pointed out, most of what we think we know is taken on trust. And so that uh, you, what you're talking about there in terms of the debate uh, on these matters, the investigation, discussion, debate, uh, this is what's lacking because I think of this dynamic that Professor Hankins is, is is describing, and I think it needs to be put front and center to the so-called educated uh, about just what an echo chamber they live in, and they should perhaps stop, stop spending so much time seeking status, a la Nicole Hannah-Jones, and more time advancing uh, our understanding of matters. Yeah, that's exactly right. The, um, you know, uh, a really excellent teacher, whether it's someone like James Hankins or an excellent history or a government teacher in, in a great classical K-12 school, it's a beautiful thing to see. Um, the teacher is the vehicle through which the students come to understand complicated material. And the story of America is a complicated story. It's one that requires someone who has the content knowledge, but then also has the freedom and the ability to lead students through an investigation uh, based on primary sources. That's the kind of thing that happens when students and teachers are really, truly pursuing the truth. And uh, it's happening in classical schools all over the country, and sometimes it happens at the college level, too. It does at Hillsdale College. Kathleen O'Toole, Assistant Provost for K-12 through Education at Hillsdale. Go to k12.hillsdale.edu to uh, download their uh, 1776 curriculum available for, as she said, parents, students, and teachers alike. And uh, while you're at it, sign up for Imprimus, too, their excellent um, monthly newsletter. Uh, Kathleen O'Toole, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. And she joined us on the turnkey.pro answer line. It's news, opinion, insight. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. This is attorney Stephen Leahy. This isn't the first crisis we faced